Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today we will be taking a look at Resident Evil Village where we'll be benchmarking over 25 GPUs to find out exactly how this game performs. As a sequel to Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, Village is built on the latest iteration of the RE engine which we also saw for the remakes of Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. This time around though, Capcom has partnered with AMD for the development of the game and for full disclosure it was AMD who provided us with the key to give us early access to Resident Evil Village. We were also given early access to AMD's Day Zero driver for this game, but thankfully Nvidia's latest 466.27 driver already provides support for Resident Evil Village. Diving in then with a first look at the game's visual settings, there are a few options present to tweak, including the usual texture and texture filtering settings, resolution scale, variable rate shading, shadows and so on. There's also a few quick presets available at the top, and based on past experience with this engine, I opted to test all of our GPUs using the max preset, but of course with V-Sync and contrast adaptive sharpening disabled. One thing I did notice about the max preset though is that the ambient occlusion setting defaults to Fidelity FX CACAO, which stands for Combined Adaptive Compute Ambient Occlusion, which is apparently optimized for RDNA GPUs. Just to make sure this wouldn't unfairly penalize Nvidia GPUs, I ran a quick test comparing CACAO and SSAO with both the RX 6800 and the RTX 3070. In both instances, the hit was just 3%, so I did opt to use CACO for our testing today. So, in this video today, we're going to start with general rasterization performance before taking a look at ray tracing later on in the video. Our benchmark pass came from quite early on in the game as the player descends down into the village for the first time. Over the hour or so that I played, the results from this scene do seem representative of wider gameplay, with the exception of some intense combat scenes which can be a bit more demanding. Those are much harder to benchmark accurately though, as there's more variation from run to run, so I kept to this outdoor scene. We're also using our standard GPU test system provided to us by PC Specialist. This is built around the i9-10900K, which has been overclocked to 5.1GHz on all cores. That is paired with the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard, and we also have 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory clocked at 3600MHz. Kicking off with the 1080p results then. As we ended up benchmarking a total of 27 GPUs, I've actually split the chart in two, and we'll start with the lower performing cards. Before looking at any specific results, I think it's great to see that all of the GPUs we tested, going back three generations mind, were able to keep the 1% lows above 30 FPS. So even with the weedy GTX 1650, you're getting a playable experience at 1080p with max settings. The 4 GB RX 570 and the GTX 1060 6GB are also doing well, both averaging 56 FPS. We can see a clear benefit to having more than 4 GB of VRAM though, as the 8 GB RX 5500 XT is significantly faster than the 4 GB model, delivering 80 FPS on average compared to 62 FPS for the 4 GB card. It is still very playable with that 4 GB card, but with textures cranked to the max, performance is compromised on cards with lower VRAM allocations. Moving up the chart then, if you want to hold above 60 FPS at all times, you'll need at least a GTX 1660 Super. Other cards like the RX 590 or GTX 1070 will average over 60 FPS, but we still saw the 1% lows drop below that figure. There's then a clear step up to the RTX 2060 and Vega 56, while the GTX 1080 Ti does appear to be showing its age in this title, delivering performance that is barely faster than the RX 5600 XT, though it is still averaging over 120 FPS. And then for the top half of our chart, any mid to high end sort of GPU from the last two or three years will be delivering a great experience at 1080p. That starts with the RTX 3060, which averaged 130 FPS, while the RX 5700 XT will deliver another 15 FPS on top of that. Speaking of the RX 5700 XT, we can see AMD's partnership on this game bearing fruit as that Navi GPU is 6% faster than the RTX 2070 Super, 
despite launching for almost £100 less. The RX 6700 XT is also matching the RTX 3070, when typically we'd expect Nvidia's GPU to be a bit faster. And then right at the top, if you just want silly frame rates in this game at 1080p, both the RX 6800 and RTX 3080 are averaging 236 FPS. While finally, the RX 6900 XT is the fastest card at this resolution, beating out the RTX 3090 by a fairly impressive 9%. Moving on to 1440p, and we're back with the slower half of our GPUs. Here, there are a few which can't hold above 30 FPS, including the GTX 1060 and the 4GB RX 5500 XT. If you're happy with just 30 FPS at 1440p though, even the RX 580 will do the business. Above that Polaris GPU, the GTX 1070 is still doing alright for 1440p gaming here, averaging 53 FPS, although the RTX 2060 is a clear step up, both in terms of the average frame rates, but also the 1% lows as well. Right at the top then, the RX 5600 XT, Vega 64 and GTX 1080 Ti are all delivering more or less the same performance, with 1% lows around the 60 FPS figure, while the average frame rates hit between 82 and 84 FPS, which in my opinion, is more than enough for a game like Resident Evil Village. If you do insist on super smooth frame rates in all the games you play though, your options are slightly more limited at the high end. AMD's RX 6800 proved the first GPU to keep its 1% lows above 120 FPS, though the 6700 XT and RTX 3070 are still delivering a very enjoyable experience with 1% lows just shy of the 100 FPS mark. We can also see that the 6800 XT is a clear winner over the RTX 3080, delivering an extra 7% performance. But again, that comes down to a difference of 176 FPS on average, compared to 189 FPS, which in a game like Resident Evil Village, I don't think makes much difference. Finally, it's the RX 6900 XT that is still top dog, averaging over 200 FPS at 1440p, and that makes it 7% faster than Nvidia's RTX 3090. Then we come to 4K. As expected, the GPUs in the slower half of our chart really struggle here. And in fact, just to keep the frame rate above 30 FPS at all times, you'll need at least an RX Vega 64, while the 5600 XT and 1080 Ti also just about managed to prevent dips below 30 FPS. If you are looking to play Resident Evil Village at 4K though, you're likely going to want a GPU from the top half of our chart. And here we still get admirable performance from the likes of the RX 5700 XT and the 2070 Super, with both delivering 52 FPS on average, despite neither GPU really being aimed for 4K gaming. If you are a really serious 4K gamer though and want a locked 60 FPS, you're going to need at least an RX 6800 while the RTX 3080 kept its 1% lows at 72 FPS and averaged 99 FPS. For the absolute fastest card 4K gaming in Resident Evil Village though, we are still looking at the RX 6900 XT, though the RTX 3090 has really caught up and the two are effectively matched for performance. Just before moving on to talk about ray tracing, we'll also take a quick look at preset scaling in Resident Evil Village. If we exclude the ray tracing preset, which won't apply to everyone, there's four main presets to choose from. Starting at the top, you have max, and then there's prioritized graphics, balance, and prioritized performance. In our testing, going from the max preset to prioritized graphics nets you an extra 13% performance while the balance preset is 12% more performant than the prioritized graphics preset. If your GPU is really struggling though, the prioritized performance preset will give you the biggest gains, and that delivers almost twice the FPS compared to the max preset, so it is good to see if you have a particularly old or particularly slow GPU, you can still play this game if you're happy with some visual compromises. So that's where we'll leave rasterization performance, but Resident Evil Village also features ray tracing, 
with reflections and some sort of global illumination. To assess this subjectively, I have to say that the visuals left me pretty underwhelmed. The ray tracing just isn't that obvious. If you look hard enough, the global illumination does change the dispersal of light in the scene, typically making things a little bit brighter or extending light bounces to places it wouldn't otherwise go, but even then, the differences are not huge at all. The reflections are also very easy to miss. They pop up on a few glossy surfaces or puddles, but they're not overly sharp and there's not that many reflective surfaces in the game that I noticed, so it is really easy to miss the reflections. Whether or not you do want to play with ray tracing on or off is entirely up to you, but in my view, it doesn't really add that much to the game and still incurs a decent hit to performance, as we are about to find out. So, at 1080p with ray tracing maxed out, the good news is that even the RTX 2060 is capable of pushing the game with these settings, as it averaged 59 FPS. The bad news is that's still a 43% hit to performance, compared to playing with ray tracing disabled, which for me just isn't worth it. It's even worse for RGNA2 GPUs as well, where the RX 6700 XT for example lost 56% performance by enabling ray tracing. It is still very playable so the option is there, but it is a very significant hit to the frame rates. The strange thing is though, as we step up to 1440p, the performance hit when enabling ray tracing actually gets smaller compared to 1080p. Overall performance is decreasing, yes, but the relative hit to frame rates is smaller. The 6700 XT, for instance, delivers 74 FPS on average with max ray tracing settings, but without ray tracing, it averaged 133 FPS. That means it lost 44% performance by enabling ray tracing at 1440p, compared to a 56% degradation at 1080p. That curiosity then only gets more obvious at 4K, where the performance hit when enabling ray tracing shrinks to just 25% for the RX 6700 XT. This is pretty strange and not something I've observed in other games when testing RT performance. The only explanation that really comes to mind is that the ray tracing is affecting CPU performance primarily, which is why we are losing more performance, relatively speaking, at the lower resolutions. It is certainly interesting from a data perspective, but either way, my recommendation remains to play Resident Evil Village with ray tracing turned off. So there we have it. That is my benchmark done for Resident Evil Village, and my impressions are definitely positive. It may not be the most cutting edge game in terms of its visuals, but I still think it looks good, and the character models are particularly impressive. What I really like about it though, is just how well it performs. Even on pretty weak GPUs like the GTX 1650, or those still hanging on to an older card like the GTX 1060, you'll still be getting a very playable experience at 1080p max settings. And the game also scales well with beefier hardware, so if you have a higher end GPU, you'll be rewarded with a significantly higher frame rate. Another point to note is that AMD is definitely seeing the benefit to its partnership with Capcom for this game, as the RGNA based GPUs do seem to overperform compared to what we would typically expect. That's shown by the 6700 XT matching the RTX 3070 across the board, while the 6900 XT is actually 7% faster than the RTX 3090 at 1440p. The only negative point for me in this game is going to be the ray tracing. I just really don't think it adds much at all from a visual perspective, while it does still incur a hit to performance. Other than that though, the game looks good and it does perform very well if you're not going to be playing with ray tracing enabled. So if you're a fan of the Resident Evil series, I would definitely give this one a thumbs up and say Capcom has done a great job with the latest iteration of the RE engine. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this video, so if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up. If you're going to be playing this game, what sort of GPU will you be using and what settings will you be targeting? Leave me a comment down below. While you're there, why not check out a link to our Discord server in the description, and you can also check out our merch and even consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early and get access to exclusive giveaways. That is it for this one though guys. I'm Dominic Forkit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.